Hi my lovely Frosty fam, it's me, Karen Frost, here at Nail Decadence. Got another video for you. In this video I shall be using some gel products, playing with the gels again. So say goodbye to those nails. Bye bye nails! <laughs> I decided to show you guys how I remove my sets and, you know, because I've mentioned before in other videos that I don't soak off so I thought I would show you how I remove a set to start a new set and so here we go so first thing I did was clip off the free edge of the nails I just used my um, handy dandy wire cutters which are awesome for getting crystals off if you don't have them get them they are cheap as chips and it's so much easier to remove crystals with that than it is to remove them with uh, an old pair of cuticle nippers trust me those things are dangerous they slip and you can stab yourself and da 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 but if you get those wire cutters it's a breeze to remove crystals trust me just just try it you won't regret it i promise anyway so yeah i clip off the free edge there you go bye bye in the bin <laughs> and then i grab my e-file and i'm using a coarse extra coarse bit and as you can see I will go up one side of the nail, go around the cuticle area and then down the other side of the nail and then work my way back across the nail if that makes sense and just take down the product down close to the uh, clear base layer. Doesn't have to get it all, I don't have to get it all off with this bit because obviously the more acrylic you remove the closer to your natural nail you're going to get and you really don't want to be digging into your natural nail with an extra coarse bit so when I get low enough and I can see that it's thin enough I will stop filing that nail and then move on to the next nail and so on and so forth and then I will change to a less harsh uh, e-file bit to finish the rest off if that makes sense so literally you're just debulking with the extra coarse bit i did remove a bit of um, lifting as well but be really careful with an extra coarse bit because if that catches your natural nail the likelihood is it's going to cut right down to your your, your nail bed and you don't want to do that it's very dangerous don't do it so yeah once you've got down and it's thin definitely switch to something that is less harsh so as you can see I've just put my sanding band on my e-file but before I start that bit I will push back my cuticles so in it looks like I'm being really uh, rough but I, obviously this video is sped up because you don't want to be here for hours and hours my videos are long enough <laughs> you don't want me in real time I'm slow I'm really slow I, I don't rush doing my nails it's it's me time, it's my time to just chill out and distract myself and I watch movies and stuff in the background whilst I'm doing my nails so I don't, I don't take, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm never in a hurry when I'm doing my nails, I just take my time and go slow and that's what I do. If I had clients then obviously I'd go faster but yeah when I'm just doing myself, my own nails, it's just, yeah it's me time and I haven't you know I had to stop doing clients because my back and my joints just can't handle it but um, yeah so I don't rush when I'm doing my own nails anywho as you can see now that I have finished pushing back the cuticles I will use my sanding band to even out the surface of the nail so I'm smoothing it out any of the obviously there's remaining acrylics like I said I I don't remove the thin clear base. I leave that on so that I'm not re-prepping my nail every two weeks. I only have to then prep the regrowth area. So I'm protecting my natural nail. But the sanding band does a few different things. I'm removing the surface shine from the regrowth area. I'm removing any lifted parts of acrylic because that I will remove because that needs to be removed. I will smooth the surface like I said because any dips and divots from the extra coarse bit 
if you use the sanding band to smooth them out instead of using your hand file you're saving your arms you know um, and I will also shape the free edge with this sanding band too so it does <coughs> excuse me it does a lot of different jobs and saves your arms with your hand file it means you've got to use your hand file less and for me that's a really important I have a lot of pain and yeah hand filing is difficult for me so if I can use my e-file more then that's that's what I will do sanding bands have got a bad reputation because they've been used by people who have used them incorrectly they're not dangerous they're not bad it's up to you to use them correctly and when they are used correctly they are wonderful and especially in these you know pandemic times where you have to be even more extra careful i mean you have to be extremely hygienic doing nails regardless but you have to be especially careful during these times sandy bands are perfect because you just take the sanding band off throw that in the bin for each client sanitize your mandrel bit and you're good to go for the next client so you get and they're so cheap you just new one out for every client like i said san, uh, sanitize your mandrel bit thoroughly of course in some barbicide and stuff so that you, it's really hygienic and yeah it's i love my sanding bands it's a shame they've got a bad rep but it's not their fault <laughs> they're they're a good look your your tools are only as good as the tech using them anything can be dangerous if it's put into the wrong hands i'm not going to go around with my husband and help him use his chainsaw when he's cutting down trees yet yeah, no you can't trust me with a chainsaw i have no experience with a chainsaw i don't know what i'm doing with a chainsaw however i'd probably you know chop my arm off or something but in my husband's hands they're not it's not dangerous because he knows how to use it he's careful he knows what he's doing so although a chainsaw is extremely dangerous it's more so if it's in the wrong hands and it's the same similar principle of your e-file and your e-file bits if they're dangerous when they're in the wrong hands get yourself some training learn how to use them correctly and it's it makes your life so much easier anyway rant over karen's ted talk <laughs> So moving on to the products I'm using, I'm using gels, like I said, and there is going to be a lot, a, 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 an awful lot of flash curing. I'm using, I didn't end up using the thick gel in this video, even though I showed it in the beginning. Um, yeah, I didn't end up using the, the really thick one, so I'm using the thinner viscosity one, so it, it can have a tendency to run when it's warm, especially when it's warm. Um, so there will be a lot of flash curing but if you can bear with the flash curing you'll you'll get to see the set if you can't i understand if you can't cope with the flash curing then click off and go and watch one of my acrylic videos <laughs> anyway base one i i didn't prime all i've done is remove the dust used a lint-free wipe and some rubbing alcohol to remove any remaining dust after i'd used the brush and then I'm putting I put a thin layer of the clear over my natural nails because you know always have a thin clear base but it also it is your base coat so you want gel products normally need a base coat regardless so same principle as your acrylic you have a thin clear base to protect your natural nail but also to give your rest the rest of your products something to stick to sometimes i prime sometimes i don't it depends on my mood i didn't prime on this occasion and like i said you don't strictly need to prime necessarily with gels but yeah so i'm sculpting using my favorite forms the sbd london forms which are so thick and strong and awesome love these forms and they're very long so i will fix that to form and as you saw i did what's the word 
modify it to make sure it fit my nails properly. I have high hypernicheums, so sometimes I do have to customize the forms to make it fit underneath my free edge properly. So that's what you saw me do. And now I will use some of the cover pink to mask my natural nail. I've mentioned in other videos, I don't like seeing the natural nail underneath. Um, I prefer to hide it, so I normally, <coughs> excuse me, I normally use a cover pink to mask my natural nail and my natural free edge because I don't want to see it. I just don't like seeing it, especially with clear nails. I just don't like to see it, so I will hide it with a cover pink. So I'm putting, a th it's not a really thick layer, but it's not a really thin layer on because I want good coverage and colour payoff, but I'm not building my strength yet. So just enough to cover the natural nail and hide it and then flash cure it, of course, several times so that it doesn't run into the side walls. And now I will use the clear to build out my base so this layer is very very thin because I'm going to be putting the rose petals in so I'm going to need to encapsulate them I want to keep this layer nice and thin but I'm sort of marking out as it were the shape that I'm going for and this shape happens to be gothic almond um, from what I have seen of gothic almonds they the difference between them and a russian almond is they're a bit more pointy and the slant is more squared off it's hard to explain it in words but if you look up russian almond versus gothic almond you know if you google it you'll see what i mean there is a difference between the two so that's the shape I'm going for because I've done a couple of Russian almonds now so I thought I'd do some gothic ones and they, they, they come down, they don't come down as far down the sides of the form as the Russian almonds do. Russian almonds come down a bit further, these ones are more narrow so yeah that, there is a difference between the gothic almond and the Russian almond. It's, it's hard because some people what they say are gothic almonds, I don't think of, of as gothic almonds and some people with the Russian almonds I don't think of as Russian almonds so I suppose it is personal taste as well but from what I have seen this, this shape that I, you will see me finish in this set is a, a gothic almond and yeah that's what I'm going for. So as you saw I've put some of the petals and some of the gold leaf in and then I will encapsulate. The gel that I'm using has a very fine silver glitter running through it but it's only sparse it's not overly noticeable you have to look really closely to see it it's the diamond the one called diamond touch it's just the tiniest amount of very fine silver glitter in it and it just gives it just this nice little sparkle but like I said you have to look really closely to see it and I just thought it would be nice to have that as well as the gold leaf and the petals of the roses so yeah I thought I'd give it a go so as you can see I flash cured and now I'm going to pinch that nail gothic almonds Russian almonds they tend to be very slim so we want to keep that slimness and as you saw I put on the clear pinching tool and then finish curing it in the lamp and that gives you a nice good shape and then I will carry on with my encapsulation. So each nail is the same and I'm building it in layers. I'm not trying to put too much gel on at a time because I'm not trying to heat spike and burn myself but on the free edge you can be a bit more generous because obviously it's not on the natural nail bed so you won't feel the heat spike as much but do it in layers because this is like I said a thinner viscosity it can have a tendency to run so you'll see me from time to time turn my hand upside down to get gravity to pull it towards the center of the nail to stop it sliding down the form too much um, yeah 
So literally, this is all I'm gonna do on every single nail is build them. Just build them up step by step. I'm not showing you every single nail because they are all the same and it's really repetitive, but I'm gonna show you a good few so that you get a really good look at exactly how I do it. And you can see my pinching tool is back on that one. Gel can sometimes bounce back with the next layers that you put on so do keep an eye on it and um, still pinch it with the with, with, with all the layers that you're putting on because it can bounce back so again add my form to my finger make sure it's nice and straight it has to be quite pinched the under arch of a gothic almond and a russian almond is very narrow it's extremely pinched so that's why I have pinched the form as much as I have it's a it's a tricky shape not gonna lie this is not a beginner type of design um, the design yeah you can do but the the shape of the nails the actual shape that is a bit trickier you do need a bit more skill to get that looking right and I've still not perfected my Russian almond or gothic almonds yet I'm still working on it it's not something you just learn in a day it takes some time to really get to grips with it so yeah i'm by no means an expert in these shapes but i love these extreme shapes they are so cool but they are technically challenging and they do take longer to do than a standard you know square or stiletto sh shape or ballerina even yeah it does take time so this set took me ages especially with all the flesh curing because I'm working on myself I'm not switching between fingers I'm having to wait for each flesh cure and, and yeah it's a time-consuming set even though the design itself is very simple because I'm literally just putting in petals and gold leaf it's still took me ages to do but I did really like this set, I really did. It's weird because the flowers, the petals, they look so purple um, when they dried, but those those were red roses and when they dry out, they, they turn into this beautiful purple and I was just like, oh, lush, that looked good with some gold. And I know one of my subscribers' most favorite color combination is purple and gold because it's, uh, sports teams colors um so you know who you are <laughs> i hope you like this set darling purple and gold your favorite i know i was doing the when i was doing these nails i thought you was you'd like these so i hope you do like them darling and thank you so much for your support i have some really good subscribers in my frosty fam they're so supportive and they're so kind thank you all i i really appreciate all your kind words and support it's just awesome i just don't have enough words to thank you all it's yeah it means a lot i read all of your comments and i just it means a lot so thank you really really appreciate it anyway so as you can see same again i am building my base well first of all I do the, the nail bed color then I build my base and then I put a thin layer on to give the petals and the gold leaf something to stick to then I flash cure that and then I do the encapsulating layers because like I said I do it in layers rather than in one big dollop so that I'm not just heat spiking because that is not fun you can actually really damage your natural nail if you give yourself a really bad heat spike because it is a burn um yeah be careful with that it can cause lifting of your natural nail and all sorts so rather than trying to get it all done in one big layer just take the sacrifice of the extra time and build it up in thinner layers so that you're not heat spiking yourself because or your client definitely not your client the last thing you want to do is cause a massive heat spike on your client you want they won't come back I guarantee you that they won't come back that is so painful you don't want to do that 
So I build it up in as many layers as it takes. Just encapsulate everything, make sure it's all good and covered and that you're not gonna file any of it away. Um, with the shape of these nails, it does have a bit of a hidden apex because I have hooked now, so I always angle the form up slightly anyway, but on a Russian almond and a Gothic almond, you do have to angle that form up. So if an, even if you're not, you've not got hooked nails, you would still have to angle that form up to get the free edge to match the apex area. That has to be in line when you're doing this kind of shape of a nail. So on to the middle finger and we are going to do the same again. So I'll customize my form, fit that to my nail, make sure it's nice and straight. Oh, do you see how I turn my hand and I look at it? Yeah, I wanna make sure it's straight. So I will look at it and then keep stopping and then pinching and keep stopping and pinching and then once I've got it in the right place then I'll really secure it and pinch that form right the way down because it does have to be a very tight curve that it just it's just the shape of the nail it has a really tight under arch so or C curve it's not really a C curve it's more of a V curve <laughs> it's really tight so you do have to pinch those forms a lot so same again doing the cover pink over my natural nail bed mask that area and I'll just keep flash curing the gel was starting to slip so I'm, I'm being really quick with my flash curing there because my hands were warm, my room was warm and yeah the gel was starting to slide a bit so I was having to hurry up and flash cure it quite quickly. There we go and once I've masked that natural nail and my free, natural free edge then I can build out my base of my tip so this is you know this is this is the layer that kind of acts like your tip so if you was attaching a nail tip you don't want this thick this layer any thicker than you would than a nail tip is a plastic nail tip that's how thin that layer has to be it's not there for anything other than for a base for you to build out on so i will pinch that first base layer flush cure it and then I'll cure it for 30 seconds after that which really helps secure it in place gets it to hold its shape a bit better and then a very thin layer over all of the nail so that I can attach all of my bits and bobs so in with the petals and again I'm sort of masking and hiding my the end of the cover pink so you know there's there's you can be a bit strategic with where you're placing things so but that's the only place that i'm really being strategic about it's just sort of hiding where the cover pink ends and then i'll just whack on the petals and the gold leaf whatever i think it would look pretty basically it's really hard not to go overboard and fill every single area i was trying to be leave more clear areas but I still ended up putting on way too many bits than what I had originally um, thought I would do I just I always go overboard with my embellishments there should have been less pieces to be honest <laughs> but yeah well it I, I still liked them it is what it is I still liked them so I'm just wiping off my brush there to get any of the gold leaf that stuck on my brush off and then I will do my encapsulating. So yeah, it's the same thing on all the nails. So that's why I'm not going to bother showing you every single nail because it does it is repetitive and it can be a bit boring when you're watching the same thing being done over and over and I think, you know, three nails is is enough for you to get a good idea of how I work with my gel if it was thicker if I was using the thicker one instead of the diamond touch one I could have put on um, I could have done it in less layers we'll say but I really thought that 
the silver bits just looked really good and I wanted them in and I noticed that if I was just using a thin layer of it I just wouldn't because the glitter is the silver glitter is really sparse I thought you know what I'm gonna have to build the entire nail with this to get the glitter to even show and that's why I didn't end up using the thick one so yeah it was all a, all about the little silver bits of glitter that you can barely see <laughs> oh, yeah I saw it because you know they were my nails so I saw it all the time but unless you looked really closely you would not know that those silver bits of glitter were in there so almost finished that nail that's that final encapsulating layer I do want to make sure that the height is good, that I've got a good apex. They are long nails. They do need a decent apex, but it doesn't have to be humongous. But um, with the shape of these nails, they do have to be, the free edge has to be the same height as your apex. So they do take a fair amount of gel to build them up. So it looks like I'm using a ton of gel. Yeah, I am using a ton of gel because they have, they have to be built up. So once I have finished pinching on all of that, I will cure all of the fingers for a 60 second full cure. And now it's a bit of filing time for my frosty filing freaks. I'm only showing you one nail filing because yeah, it's just so repetitive and I thought no point. So. As you can see, I'm using my e-file and I'm going to refine that free edge, sidewall area and the under arch. And I'm going to keep stopping and looking and making sure that the nail is coming out even. Now I'll go around that cuticle area, get that nice and flush. Dust away with your brush as much as you need to, to see what you're doing that's really important so you don't cut yourself because this is not a safety bit and if that slips oh yeah you're looking to slice and dice so then I will blend that cuticle area up into the apex and then I'm I'm just contouring the nail with the e-file and once I've got it pretty much there then I will use my hand file to really just tighten up that shape so free edge straighten those out get that under arch nice and neat and straight and then as you can see i will go up the side walls and then blend the top into those side walls i don't want to step i don't want this harsh block of a line i want it all blended in and contoured nicely but i I'm, as you can see i'm not really taking away my apex you can see where my where the hand file is hitting the nail. I know it's fast because I sped it up, but you can you can see where I'm filing. I'm blending and contouring that nail. So I've switched to a less harsh of a grip of a file, which is a much smoother file, and I'm just smoothing it out and making sure that it's all even and neat and not lumpy bumpy and nice and smooth so there we go I just stop and look all the time stop and look all the time and make sure that the, it's going the way it should and that the shaping is on point and then yeah then I can dust off and now it's time to top it off and keep it tough so there we go they're so cool because they are glass nails, I will use my top coat underneath the nails because that gives you that extra bit of clarity, which is really cool. So if you're doing clear nails, glass nails, top coat underneath them, you'll get much, much higher quality of clarity than you would if you didn't un uh, top coat underneath them. But anyway, since we are pretty much at the end of the video, there is some video footage and photos at the end for you to look at um so whilst i'm top coating off oh look at this look at this oh look at that isn't that cool it's such a cool effect and it's so simple well not the shape the design the gold leaf and petals that's simple but oh 
it's so cool anyway yeah waffling on thank you ever so much for coming to my channel and spending some of your most precious time with me i appreciate you thank you ever so much for watching if you have not done so already please go ahead and click that subscribe button join the frosty fam they are awesome uh, if you have enjoyed this video in any way shape or form or it's helped you in any way please go ahead and click that like button for me i'd appreciate it ever so much and if you feel like it you are most welcome to leave me a comment i'm more than happy to talk to you so that's all i've got for this time peeps you take care now and i'll speak to you all again well hopefully soon because i'm still waiting for my laptop so i don't know when the next video has come up you know when i'm going to manage to uh get that edited because this one has been a pain in the bottom to get edited the crashing was driving me insane but yeah finally finally got it done so that i could voice it over so yeah anyway I'll, I'll speak to you all as soon as i can we'll say so take care now peeps bye for now Make it.